In this watercolor tutorial, I will be painting a fawn with a butterfly. Before we get started painting, I will first go over the supplies that I plan on using. But first, I want to share about like what you see here on my watercolor paper. So I did add some collage to my painting already and I have a video on how I did that linked down below for you if you want to give it a try. You don't have to though for this tutorial, you can just have a plain sheet of watercolor paper. And my outline is on the paper, so to do that, I do provide an outline for you that you can download. It is linked in the description down below. And what I did was I used a projector to trace my outline. You can also use graphite transfer paper or a light pad. And the reference photo is also linked down in the description for you. Okay, so the supplies that I plan on using is this watercolor pan set from Art Philosophy. It's the Woodlands pan set. So I plan on using this. And I also plan on using these iridescent colors from KMS Watercolor. I plan on using these mostly for this butterfly, maybe a little bit in the deer and then throughout the background. And I will be using my silver black velvet watercolor brushes. These are my most favorite brushes for watercolor. I just love them so much. And I might also use these Princeton Neptune brushes here, but I'm not quite sure. And then I have this very big brush here from Milan Art Institute that I might use for the background. Oh, and I cannot forget the watercolor paper. So the paper I'm using is from Arches. It is a cold press block from Arches. So the very first thing I'm going to do is paint in the background all around the deer because that way I can see the deer better against the collage. You don't have to paint the background. You can skip ahead a little bit if you just wanna paint the deer, but I do want to at least do like a light layer of in the background. So the background color, I am thinking of just using like a really dark blue color. So I'll probably use this mist here, maybe mixed with this deep moss, or maybe I'll use this deep moss color. Yeah, I like that idea. So <laughs> I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna dip my brush in here. I'm just gonna add it over here where I have some green already. And I do have some gouache right here that I accidentally just mixed in my paint, but it's okay. I think it'll be just fine. So to do the background, I'll probably end up doing a few layers, but I'm just gonna do one layer for now and then paint in the deer with you. And then I'll probably add more in the background. I have about like 50-50 for water and paint. And I'm really trying to mix a lot of this because I don't want to have to mix this again and have my paint dry in the background. I just want to do it all at once. Over here I'm just going to use my finger to blend into this flower that I collaged. It is creating a different kind of texture simply because I have watercolor ground, <laughs> transparent watercolor ground underneath. So. While my paint is still wet, I'm going to add some like this blue, this sparkly blue color. Okay, I'm now going to wait for this to dry before I start painting in the deer. 
so I'm thinking that my painting is going to be maybe like 8 by 10 so I'll probably cut it off here or have it be a square in case you're wondering. <laughs> Next I am going to start working on the fawn and I'm, I will be adding like a really light wash color. So first I will do like a really light brown color. So I'm just going to take this brown here from the woodland set. It's called Bear. And I, I'm still using my big brush. And I'm going to mix maybe a little bit of this Foxberry color. It's like a reddish purple. It just kind of warms up that brown a little bit. And I want to add a lot of water because I want this to be very light. Okay, and my reference picture is in front of me to look at. And I'm just going to add this brown basically wherever I see brown. And I'm going to also have a dry clean brush so I can just kind of blend that brown a little bit. trying to remain loose, trying not to do any details or anything. I just want to block in some color. And the white spots, if you plan on using the white of your paper for those spots, then you want to paint all around the spots. The eye, plan on painting them in with white gouache. It just makes it a lot easier. And probably the same with like a lot of these white areas on the fawn. Okay, I mostly blocked in everywhere where it's brown with like a light brown. And now I'm going to go back in with like a darker brown. So I'm just adding some more of this brown paint to this watery brown and I'm not adding any more water to it and I'm going to add in a little bit of that red color that I mixed in earlier and now I'm going to add this in the darkest areas that I see. I'm going to take my brush that just has a little bit of clean water in it and kind of move this around So I'm basically just, yeah, moving this paint around. <laughs> and as I get to the outer edge of the painting, I'm, I'm going to be a lot more loose with it. And I'm going to subtract off a little bit, so I'm kind of wiping some of this away because I added a little too much because this area on the fawn is lighter. Take a clean, wet brush. It's not very wet though, just a little bit. I'm just gonna blend this up. This painting was, or is inspired by one of my recent paintings that I completed for the mastery program at Milan Art Institute for my uh, portfolio. I just thought it'd be fun to do a watercolor version that is, I guess, kind of still mixed media because that's the collage, but. Next, I'm going to paint in the eyes. So I will be taking probably this mist color here, this blue mix it with that shadow color, the black. I'm just going to add it right here. I already have some black. And then add some more black. And I'm adding maybe about 50% water. So like 50% paint, 50% water. 
I will add another layer to the eyes, but this layer will be a little lighter than the final layer. And now I'm using my size 8 silver black velvet brush. And I have a lot of paint and water in my brush, so I'm going to soak some of this up with a dry brush. And the eyelashes, I'm going to save for like last. I'm not going to worry about the eyelashes yet. And yeah, I'm just kind of using the very tip of my brush here. And I will drag off some of this, like wipe some of it off for that highlight. Now I'm going to take the same color and paint in the nose. I think I just realized I might have painted over some of the mouth. I did, right here, so oops. <laughs> it looks like mm, the bottom, like the chin is here. I'm pretty sure I did paint over that. It's hard to tell. So I'm just going to kind of outline that, but this part right here is white, so I'll just add that in with white, with white gouache. Yeah, I'm not too worried or anything. And then here's the nose. Okay, I'm going to take a clean brush that just has a touch of water in it. I'm going to blend this up because if you look at the reference, it's like, like the nose fades into the fur. It's not like it just stops suddenly. So I'm going to blend that up. Okay, I'm going to wipe with a clean brush, wipe some of the highlights off of the nose. Okay, next I'm going to do a layer on the butterfly. I'm just going to do like a light blue layer with this shimmery blue color from KMS. I'm going to go ahead and add some of this to the eyes and the nose. It'll make it look more cohesive and just make it look prettier. I'm going to wipe some of this off in like the back wings here. Next I'm going to add some of the red color that I see in the ears. So I'm going to take Foxberry and I'm going to mix it into this area here on my palette and maybe mix some of the blue into this to make it more of like a purple color. There we go. Again, I'm still trying to be loose. Probably in the last layer I'll add detail. I'm really trying to remain loose. <laughs> I don't want to be too like rigid. I just want to be more free. More free with my brush strokes and all that. It's just more fun that way. I'm making a darker color now with less water and a little bit more blue. I'm really trying to make those dark areas pop now. Just kind of dropping in some of the dark here, letting it blend to my already wet area. I have a uh, clean brush here that I'm just blending a little bit with. Remember that you don't want to go dark, too dark too soon with watercolor. You really just want to build up 
those layers because once you go dark this is really basically impossible to go back to light. Blending colors a little bit. Okay, next I'm gonna mix a dark brown. So I'm gonna take Bare with my size eight brown brush here. And I'm gonna mix some of both of that pink that I was using and that blue to make like a purple tinted brown. Or wait, you know what? I'm just gonna mix more of the pink in it, in it because I want it to be more of like a pink tinted brown. And not a lot of water, so only enough water to make this easy to paint with. Okay, taking my other brush that just has some clean water in it, blending this up a little bit because this is a lot of paint. I have a lot of paint in that brush, so. Drop some more in. some more over here. I'm going to start working around the eyes. Looking at the reference, I'm really trying to have my brush strokes follow the fur. This is my brush that just has some water in it and I'm blending. I'm just building up the darks, adding darks where I see them, building up the layers. clean my brush and actually I'm going to use a smaller brush. I will be using my size 4 round brush and I'm mixing basically black but I'm going to add a touch of blue into it so it's not just black. And only enough water to make this easy to paint with. And we're going to paint in the eyes again another layer. I am leaving the highlight unpainted. I'm going to soak some of this up with another brush and then kind of blend a little bit. I'm painting in the corner of this eye, dragging some of this over. Now I'm going to take the same black color and paint in the nose, just like the darkest 
areas. And I'm going to let that kind of blend up into the fur. Okay, I'm going to take the same color here. Really add in those darks, like over here that I see in the ear. On the edge. Next, I am going to take white gouache. I did not have this as a supply for the beginning of this video, but I will be using it for quite a bit of this painting, at least for like the white areas, but you don't have to do this. You can just use the white of your paper, but since I have collage in the back, white gouache is really important for the white areas. And I'm going to take my size four silver black velvet brush here and I'm just taking it without mixing any water in it at least for now and I'm going to add it where I see white fur and I will not make this so white in some areas like right here if you look at the reference it's not this white I will change that I'm just right now I'm just applying it and if you're doing what I'm doing like using white gouache, and especially around these dark eyes, adding white right next to the dark will really make the eyes pop. So I highly recommend doing that. And I'm also using a texture of this surface to add some texture to. If your white gouache starts to get really thick because it's starting to dry a little bit, you can add some water to it. I'm just adding highlights in the nose. And then in the eyes. And then now I'm going to paint in the white spots. can't really see my outlines anymore of the white spots except for a few of them so I'm just going to kind of go off of my reference but you want your spots to be very natural looking you don't want them to look like circles that's probably the most important part about them and you don't want them to all be the same size just really study the reference picture if you do that go off of the reference then he'll be just fine. Now it's time to add detail to our fawn. So I'm going to mix a dark brown. I'm going to be mixing Bear, as usual, the color Bear in the Woodland set, with Foxberry. And I want this to be fairly dark. So I, I'm not adding a lot of water to this. And then I'm going to have my other brush right here that is clean. It has a little bit of water in it and I will use that to blend. So I'm going to study the reference and kind of add individual hairs. Really looking 
at my referencing like the direction of the fur and I'm gonna blend when I feel like I I need to especially in the white gouache a little bit not too much but it'll just make it look a little better I'm dabbing at these brush marks so that they don't stand out as much. Blending. Next, I'm taking my size 4 round brush, taking some of this mist color, and I'm going to add some in the shadows around the eyes. And let that kind of like blend into the white gouache. That might be a little too blue, so instead, I'm going to reactivate this like black blue color, maybe add a little bit more blue to it. But I basically want to really yeah, add these shadows that I see here. Although it's looking really blue right now. Okay, kind of blending. great thing about white gouache, I guess it could be a good thing and bad thing, <laughs> but it reactivates when you add water to it, which I like most of the time. That way I can work it later on. Okay, and I'm going to get into my white gouache again. I'm reactivating it with some water. And in the middle here, there is like a highlight in the fur. So I'm gonna add this in. Again, I'm trying to go in the direction that I see the fur. And then, yeah, I'm gonna add some highlights here and there. Okay, I have some like black blue going back in. The 
this in more detail. And blend. And I'm going to add in the eyelashes. Next I'm taking some white gouache, basically just out of the tube here, and I'm going to go back over the areas I want to be white. Next, I'm going to add more to the butterfly. So I plan on using this mist color here and also stream this color. I'll start off with stream. So I'm taking some of that stream color just cause it's a little lighter than the other one. And I'm using my size four round brush and I have my other brush here that just has a little bit of water in it that I will use to blend and I'm just gonna first add this where it's like dark, like a darker blue. And then take this blending brush, blend this up, I'm trying to follow the shape of the butterfly. Next I'm taking mist and I'm going to paint like the darkest areas of the butterfly. I'll probably add a little bit of black into this. So I'm not mixing a lot of water into this color because I want it to be dark. This is my blending brush. I'm just blending the outer part of what I just applied into the other blue color. And then I'm going to paint in the butterfly's head, which is about right here. And then a little sliver for the body, the antenna. very tip of my brush. My butterfly does look a little different than the reference. I just kind of made it into a butterfly that I wanted to paint like the shape. I 
And I'll do the same thing on the back wings here. Next, I'm going to add more in the background. So I'm going to take the deep moss color from the Woodland set and my very big brush here. And I'm only going to add this in areas of the background where I want it to be really dark. So this is especially important to add right adjacent to the lighter areas of the fawn because it'll just help him stand out more. So if you did not paint your background, you don't have to do this. You can skip ahead if you'd like. Yeah, I think I might add a little bit of this blue, the mist blue color. So I'm going to start right here because this area on his neck is light and I want it to be darker in the background. And I do want some of the collage to still show. I kind of painted over him a little bit. Oops. So I might be doing multiple layers in the background to really make it dark. There's a chance I I might use some gouache in the background, like a dark green color of gouache to really make my collage disappear seamlessly in the back of the painting. But uh, we'll see. So yeah, if you don't have collage then you don't even have to worry about that at all. I really like this area right here of the collage, like the handwriting. I'm not going to mess with that, but I might make it dark back here. Kind of blend that into the font a little bit. Yeah, sometimes I use my fingers when I paint. <laughs> I added some drips to this painting here and I will show you how I did that. So to add drips to your painting, you'll want to mix a lot of a color with a good amount of water into it. So yeah, I'm just taking some blue here and I have a large brush. Let's see, where do I want to add drips? Another drip. Maybe right here under this flower so I'll like kind of apply the paint and then tilt my paper surface. Let me increase the brightness. So just tilt your paper more. There we go. And then lay it back down when you're happy with how the drip looks. So here's the one I just did, and I really like that. I really like how the drips add a just interesting look that is fun and loose looking. Okay, next I am going to paint in some splatters. Adding splatters to your paintings really make them look fun and dreamy. It's one of my favorite things to add. So right here I have like an iridescent color from KMS Watercolor. So I'm just trying to get a lot of this in my brush. You'll need to have a good amount of water too. If it's too dry it won't splatter. And then you might want to cover anything on your surface that you don't want splatters on. So I'm just going to cover the fawn's face with this. <laughs> then you just put out your finger and uh, just add some splatters here and there. And if you don't like a splatter, you can take a dry, clean brush and just kind of soak it up. I didn't 
doesn't really work very well, but. Okay, so there are some final details that I wanna add to the fawn. So I'm gonna reactivate this black blue color and I'm using my size two round brush. And the fawn has like some eyelashes and stuff. I'm gonna add a little bit more and some whiskers. There, I don't like that. I'm just gonna rub that away. I have watercolor ground, so it's easy to just rub off like what I apply, but if you don't have watercolor ground on your surface, you might wanna be a little bit more careful. <laughs> yeah, I'm just adding some final details. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would love to know other kinds of animals that you would like to paint. So comment your ideas down below. And I also linked in the description below my Woodlands Animal class, which you might enjoy if you liked this tutorial. I also have a 10 day Woodland Animal Challenge where I paint five woodland animals in 10 days with you. You can also find that linked down below. And I have tons of other animal tutorials here on YouTube, so you can just search Alice in Lion Art Animal <laughs> Tutorial or something like that, and you'll be able to find lots of different kinds of animal tutorials that I've done. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.